Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, episode 49. He who is called in the Lord is free. I got a Christian meditation on 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 22 through 24. So I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. And my purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life and to be more open to be changed by the Spirit of God. Today's meditation will follow this outline. We'll begin with relaxation, followed by a reading from the Bible, then we'll move into a reflection on that meaning of meditation, and then a prayer asking God for guidance in applying these messages in our life, contemplative silence, searching for His answer, and then a visualization of how to incorporate these answers and insights into our lives. So I invite you to get into a place where you can sit comfortably and uninterrupted for the next 20 minutes. If you feel comfortable to do so, I invite you to close your eyes now. As soon as you do this, you begin to become aware of your own breathing pattern. You notice the tension in your body and the things that you feel that are restricting you or encumbering you. Become aware of these things and gently allow your body to expand, to open and to receive more life-giving air. As you do this, you feel air coming into your body and you feel your muscles begin to slowly relax. With each passing breath, you feel more calm. You breathe in gently and you breathe out, finding a nice, slow and easy rhythm of your breath. As you do this, you continue to feel every part of your muscles unflexing and relaxing all up and down your back, from your shoulders, between your shoulder blades, down your back, including your lower back and anywhere else on your body where you feel tension. Imagine the air you're breathing in is pure water clearing out every bit of tension in your body. Continue breathing deeply, and as you do this, you realize there is absolutely nothing stopping your free breathing. You have complete ability to expand your breathing at any moment. Throughout the next few days, I invite you to pay attention to your breathing and realize how good you can begin to feel with several slow and deep breaths. You realize your soul has complete freedom inside of your body. It is through the grace of God's gift that we can overcome this world and this body. So as we prepare to read this scripture, I invite you to keep your breathing slow and easy and let these words penetrate deep into your heart. Search them 
carefully for the message that God has for you at this moment in your life. Notice what phrases, words, or ideas pop into your head as you're listening to this. And then use your discernment to try to learn from these things. We'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 22 through 24. We'll be reading through the King James Version, followed by the English Standard Version. First, the King James Version. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye therefore servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. What is the message of this scripture for you? Now reading from the English Standard Version. For he who is called in the Lord as a bondservant is a free man of the Lord. Likewise, he who is free when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Consider and reflect on those thoughts that occur to you as you reflected on God's Word. What does this scripture mean? Continue breathing deeply as you ponder this message and allow it to fully absorb in your heart. reflect on this scripture a little bit. Today, I was in the battlefield of Fredericksburg. This is a Civil War battlefield in the United States. And I stood at the top of this ridge where the cannons were at. And there was an old wooden building that still has these Civil War bullets lodged in them from over 150 years ago. The scars of the war are still physically visible. These scars can also afflict humans through culture and tradition. So as humans, we think sometimes that we have more power than we actually do. Even the worst things we do to each other can't control the ultimate destiny of another person. Certainly, positive actions and negative actions towards each other can influence each other. But it's ultimately between the individual and God where the eternal destiny is determined. So Paul recognizes this profound truth. He shows that regardless of our circumstances in life, through Christ we have freedom But at the same time, we also have accountability. So we're both free, as in we have an option to experience life eternal with Him, but we also have an accountability to Him. Now consider how we can apply these concepts. As we consider our reliance on God, we should still use all of our earthly power to help each other and to allow others to serve God as well. God recognizes our freedom. The people who fought at Fredericksburg, many of them were willing to lay down their lives 
to ensure the freedom of others. It reminds me of a popular hymn, and it was popular during the Civil War as well. It's called the Battle Hymn of the Republic. But specifically, there is the final verse, which I find so meaningful and applicable. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Now when they sang this in Civil War times, they said, and he died as he died to make men holy. Let us die to make men free. Lucky for us, many of us don't have to die to make others free, but we certainly can live in such a way that we help others on their search and on their walk with God. May we have ever-increasing ability and strength to do that. Please join me in prayer. Dear Father, as we consider the ramifications of the freedoms which we have, as we consider the mighty, gracious gift that we have been given, through the sacrifice on the cross. We ask thy blessing to fill us and guide us, to open our hearts and allow us to take action that is helpful to each other. May we recognize our accountability as well as our freedom from sin through the sacrifice of thy Son. Bless us and inspire us that we can always know how to act Guide us that we can take from this scripture a message that can help us improve our lives. And may we be humble enough to carry it out. And this we say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a few more seconds. Now that we've had an opportunity to pray to God for guidance, I invite you to sit in silence, not engaging in an intellectual battle, but just sitting in the moment and experiencing the peace of God. I'll give you a few more seconds. Now I invite you in this moment, having now reflected, try to take whatever insights you've gained and to imagine your life as though you had that thing. For example, someone reached out to me recently asking for more clarity on this concept. Let's say that as I was listening to this, I considered how I needed to be more kind to a specific person, or perhaps that I needed to give up some personal bias or make reconciliation or stop a sin. 
If that's one of the insights that I gained during this time, I invite you to ponder what your life would look like if you were to change that thing in your life. If you were to stop that particular sin or if you were to reconcile with that person or whatever the insight that you gained was. If you experienced a peaceful feeling, imagine what your life would be like to experience more peaceful feelings in your life. Imagine taking this insight that you've gained here, whether it's an intellectual concept, an action, or just a feeling, and try to imagine your life going forward where this is present in your life. I'll give you a few moments to do that now. give you a couple more seconds. Many times, our thoughts finally come together as we explain them to someone else or as we write them down. So I invite you right now to imagine what you would say to someone about the insights that you've gained. For example, if you feel like reconciling, that you need to reconcile with an individual person, you can imagine how you would explain that to someone else, why that's important, and what benefits do you think there would be and how you believe that's consistent with what God's asked you, reflecting on this scripture or the other insights which you gained in prayer. I invite you to consider how you would explain this to someone else or write it in a journal. I'll give you a few moments to do that now. So as I prepare to finish up, I want to give a couple words here and then I'm going to get to the final homework assignment, as my wife likes to call it, question, and then final monologue. But before I do that, I want to make a couple points here. So I release a new episode every Sunday morning at 1 a.m. time, mountain time in the United States. If you're wondering why my audio sounds a little different, it's because I am recording out of a hotel room in Washington, D.C., and I'm using my travel mic, so <laughs> if you notice that, that's why. You can reach out to me. I love getting your feedback from y'all at my website, christianmeditationpodcast.com. There's a contact button, and you just click on the contact button, fill out that form, and it'll send an email directly to me. I want to say thank you to all the people who have been supporting me on Patreon. I have intended to do so much more with that and reach out to you and, and recognize you. I'm, I've been so busy with grad school and I'm graduating on the 27th, so that's coming up. Cannot believe it. Anyway, very excited about that. And hopefully over the next couple of weeks I'll be moving and hopefully it'll calm down after that though and I'll be able to put a little bit more attention into those kind of details. And many of you have been asking about the journal that I've been talking about releasing, so I'll see if I can make more progress on that. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Christian Meditation Podcast. Here's the final question I want you to ponder, and you can either journal about this or you can answer via email to me or someone else. And here's the question. What is at least one way in which you are free as a result of Jesus? And what is one way that you are a servant to Jesus. So what's way one way you're free because of Jesus and what's one way in which you are a servant because of Jesus? 
either answer that to me in an email or someone you care about or journal about it. And here's the final thought I want to go through. This week I've been spending in Washington, D.C. I've had an opportunity to go with a congressional staffer all over the Capitol building. Because of my interest in the chaplaincy, the staffer showed us the door that goes into what's called the prayer room in the Capitol building. Only Congress members are allowed inside, so we weren't allowed to go inside. And I realized how special that is to me. We desperately, desperately need God's help. And that goes for at all levels of decision making. As we realize that through Christ we are both completely and 100% free, yet also Christ's bondservants. That's a powerful concept. As the Spirit moves in us, we are moved to help and love each other. We have a powerful opportunity every single day, and that's to look deep in our hearts and attempt to root out whatever things that we don't like that we find there. May God grant you the strength to do just that. There's a glory in Christ's bosom that transfigures you and me. It changes us, as the verse says. He died to make us holy. Let us live to make others free. And I say that in Jesus' name. Amen.